Hello, I'm Greg Haynes and welcome to the first ever Talking Away in five minutes. And a special hello to those of you watching in vision for the first time here on the Greg Haynes TV pages, YouTube, Instagram and Twitter. Also, of course, hello to those of you listening on the regular podcast platforms. Please like, subscribe, leave your comments. I'm very interested to know your opinions because we've got massive drama. He's leaving and I'm not talking about Philip Schofield parting company with Holly Willoughby out this morning. That was more expected. What was not expected was Toprat Razgatli Oglu jumping ship from Yamaha in World Superbikes to BMW next year. Now let's get this out of the way first. Money, money, money. We know BMW are big payers. We know that a Yamaha ride has been poached before by BMW. That was Michael Vandermark two years ago for at least double, if not three times what he was on with Yamaha. And I'm sure Toprak and his manager Keenan Safoglu would enjoy the increased salary slash commission. And of course, all the other benefits you get when you're a BMW rider, such as the free cars and all the rest of it. Okay, I've spoken since all hell broke loose this afternoon on the internet and on social media with all these announcements. First of all, that Top Rat was leaving Yamaha, then a few hours later that he was joining BMW with a few sources, some of them trusted, some of them not quite so trusted. And I've put all that together with my own thoughts and things I've heard and seen at the last two rounds in the paddock at Assen in Catalonia. Let me know what you think. So, Top Rack, yes, obviously he was in talks with Yamaha and also with Kawasaki and obviously with BMW. Paul Denning said to me on Eurosport television back at Assen a couple of rounds ago, we want to keep top rack, of course, it's sensational talent, quite possibly, as Keenan Safoglu says, and many others, maybe even more talented than a lot of the riders, even in MotoGP, let alone World Superbikes. And I believe in the end they did offer him perhaps a three-year deal and the money was there. But I think that BMW deal was already done, you know. Certainly some sort of agreement, if not a contract already signed at Assen or just after Assen. And we know it's from 2024 onwards. Not sure how many years it is, though, with Top Rack and BMW. So what do Yamaha do now? Andrea Locatelli's been talking with Kawasaki, which makes you wonder what Alex Lowe's future will be like. Will he not be alongside Jonathan Ray next year? We will see. Locatelli, though, is staying. I can tell you a press release will go out very soon. It's a two-year deal for Locatelli, I believe, to stay with Patty Yamaha. Who's going to be alongside him? Will it be Reading and what would be a basic swap with Top Rack? Could Van der Mark leave BMW and go back to Yamaha? Domi Agata, of course, is a prime candidate as a GRT rider. And I, over his first four rounds has been splendid so far this year and a long way still to go. Franco Morbidelli, he's been mentioned as well. Which brings us on to MotoGP. Why did Safoglu and Toprak not do that in the end? When we know that MotoGP can destroy careers as well as make superstars. And Keenan says to me, and I've spoken with him today, Really these days, as much as we wanted to be there, you've got to go through the system, whether it's Junior World Championship or Red Bull Rockies or both, then Moto3, Moto2, MotoGP. Of course, Keenan's had his own troubles in that paddock in Moto2 and Toprat wasn't particularly happy there in his Red Bull rookie days. And as we've seen with Ben Spees and James Tozend as well in the past, it can make life very difficult and it can even destroy career sometimes. So they believe, Toprak and Safoglu, that the BMW is the way to go. Some people today are saying, this is unbelievable, this is ridiculous, what are they thinking? But if he can take a few key members with him, and somebody even said to me today, he should take the whole Crescent team, switch them from Yamaha to BMW and replace Sean Muir Racing. Bit harsh maybe, bit of a far-fetched theory maybe, who knows? But I can't see that happening. Crescent, of course, will stay with Yamaha, SMR will stay with BMW. And Top Rack could go down in history, maybe at one point, as only the third rider after James Tozen and Troy Corsa to win the World Superbike title on two different machines. How sensational would that be? As crazy as it sounds at the moment, who knows? Because I remember when Top Rack left Kawasaki and Keenan Safoglu got a lot of stick for that move as well. People said, well, that's it. His career's over. What a shame. What a waste. His riding style, Top Rack, it's not going to suit the Yamaha two years later. He was world champion. Other quick bit of gossip as well. Michael Rinaldi and the Aruba situation. I believe Bouliger now is the favourite there. I don't think Bassani's done himself any favours. We know Bassani was talking last year with Honda. Could he maybe talk with Kawasaki or maybe Yamaha as well? Bouliger, automatic promotion apparently to the Aruba Superbike if he wins the Supersport title with that team, which is looking quite good at the moment. And even if it's not the Aruba Superbike, apparently it will be an automatic promotion to a Ducati Superbike of one sort or another. So we'll see what happens there. Scott Redding in the meantime, will he stay with BMW? I know he's got a cut off an option on his contract up to the 15th of July. If he makes a decision before then he could move or if he doesn't until the 15th of July, he's staying there alongside Toprak next year.